A week ago, I received the task to repair this electric model railway in time for Christmas. So I built up a small test track, connected the included transformers output to the interference suppression capacitor boards, and from there I hooked up both power wires to the rails. After then placing the locomotive onto the rails, I slowly cranked up the transformer output power, which to my surprise made the locomotive start moving without a problem. Seems like someone was probably just having some problems with loose connections. But since I'm already in possession of such a model railway and also not satisfied with its maximum speeds, Let's find out in this video how we can easily increase it and what kind of maximum speed we can theoretically and practically achieve. Let's get started. To start off, I had a closer look at the locomotive and quickly found out how to open up its housing. On the inside we can see a motor whose two terminals are connected to apparently a power control circuit. This circuit gets powered through a resistor, whose other side is directly connected to a metal pickup on the bottom side, which while driving touches metal points which are positioned all around the track and are directly connected to the first voltage potential of the transformer. Now the other potential of the transformer outputs is connected to the rails and thus picked up by the metal body of the locomotive, which is thereby also connected to the circuit through a metal screw. Pretty nice design when you think about it, but the main question is still the same. How can we make the motor move faster? Well, trying to increase its applied voltage would be a good start. So to examine the existing voltage, I soldered two wires to the motor, which I then hooked up to my oscilloscope. And after powering the locomotive through some alligator clip wires and slowly increasing the voltage, we can see a pretty crazy looking motor voltage. I assume it looks this unique because the manufacturer implemented a pretty neat function which utilizes the circuit's p-channel MOSFET IC in combination with probably an encoder IC and a special voltage signal that basically reverses the motor direction and thus lets you drive the locomotive forwards and backwards. And by having a look at the transformer voltage, we can not only see the special reverse direction voltage, which is basically the common 50Hz sine wave but with a slightly higher voltage value than usual, but we can also find out that the AC arm S voltage value of the transformer outputs is proportional to the motor speeds, which means increasing the voltage is the way to go. But sadly 18.6V arm S is the end for the given transformer. And neither do I really want to use my auto transformer for this kind of experiment due to safety reasons, nor do I think that the power circuit can handle much higher AC voltages. That is why I disconnected it from the motor and basically hooked up the rail voltage potentials directly to the motor through the help of some wires. After then connecting my 60V DC power supply to the rails instead of the transformer, it was finally time to test out how fast the locomotive can go. And as you can see, it can surely go a lot faster with a higher voltage. But as I was getting to around 48V, the locomotive started falling off the track during the curves. That is a classical physics problem, in which the centrifugal force exceeds the force of the locomotive weights. So in theory, we can calculate the maximum speed with this formula. And after measuring the diameter of the half circle curve and using a calculator, I got a maximum speed of around 1.9 meter per second or 6.8 km per hour or 4.2 miles per hour. 
To confirm this VV, I measured the remaining distance of the track, marked a spot where to time the laps and let the locomotive drive around with the highest possible speed while measuring the time of each lap. After then creating an average 4 laps duration, I calculated the practical maximum speed of the locomotive, which was around 1.1 meter per second or 4 km per hour or 2.5 miles per hour, which was not surprisingly quite a bit lower than the theory, because we used a very simplified formula. So it seems like my locomotive cannot go back to the future but we still achieved a big speed boost with the higher DC voltage in comparison to the old transformer AC voltage values. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed my small Christmas experiment. As always, thanks for watching and happy holidays. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.